Hi, I'm David I, and welcome to this Rad Studio XE preview focused on building tomorrow's applications today. I'm here with Rad Studio product manager Mike Roslog. Hi, Mike. Hi, David. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Rad Studio XE is the only application development environment that gives you native connectivity to nine major databases and ready-made components for cloud connectivity. Mike, what's new in Rad Studio XE for developers? Well, Rad Studio XE can help you future-proof your applications that you're building today. You know, our customers are trying to develop these applications that are taking it into new areas, new realms. With Rad Studio XE, we can do enhanced database, we can do enhanced multi-tier development, we now have enhanced uh, web development, and we also have new support for cloud computing, which I'm really excited about showing you guys today. One of the really great new features in XE is the ability now to build DataSnap servers in native C++. I have the exact same capabilities now for C++ as I did for Delphi and all of the great features like REST, authentication, all of those great new features we added. So let's go out there and create a really quick DataSnap server in C++. So when I click on the dialog to start off the wizard, it comes up and asks me do I want to create a VCL Forms application, a console application, or a service application. Let's keep it with a VCL Forms application. It also comes up and asks me what kind of protocol. Do I want to use HTTP or do I want to use TCP IP? For this one, I'm going to use TCP IP and I am going to set up some sample methods. Next, I'm going to set up the port and this port is going to be 211, which is fine. That is the default. Finally, I'm going to pick which type of ancestry I want it to come from and I want it to come from a server module. I'm now going to say finish. This will go ahead and generate a complete application for me. So if I go out and take a look at my C++, you'll notice the regular unit. My server methods is really where my business logic is located. So if I come out to the CPP, I'll see that I have a reverse string. If I come out to my .h, I'll see that I also have an echo string and I'll see all of the processes for that. And then of course I have my container which sets up the actual DataSnap server setup. So now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and run this without debugging. Now my server is up and running. This is the C++ server that we created. The next thing I'm going to do is come into Data Explorer. And the reason for that is because DataSnap is built on top of DB Express. So if I come into DataSnap, I can literally come into DataSnap Connection. I can open this up. I can right mouse click on this and ask to modify connections. Notice it's set up for TCP IP, it's local host, and we were set up for 211. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the port 211 and I'm going to test my connection. When I test my connection, it comes back as successful, and I'm going to go ahead and click the OK. Now, when I come into my DataSnap connection, I can come into the procedures, and I can go down to reverse strings. I'm going to double click on it so that I can kick it off, and now what I want to do is come in here, put in my value, and I'm going to say Mike Roslog, and then I'm going to execute against the server that is running down below. So when I execute this, you'll notice that it comes back, as goals are ecom. So that is how quickly and easily now you can build a data snap server in C++. All you do is go into your server methods, start adding them, and they're exposed as remote methods for you. Let's go on to the next example. The first thing we're going to accomplish is writing a data snap server that's going to connect to Windows Azure. And so I have a data snap server that communicates through REST to a Windows Azure service called a queue. Think of it as a message queue or an enterprise queue. And this is going to be running out on Microsoft Azure. This server, this DataSnap server, is going to be deployed to Amazon EC2 and be running out in the cloud using our new deployment, the cloud infrastructure. We have another DataSnap server that's going to be doing validation on input from various clients. That data snap server is going to communicate through TCP IP to the Azure data snap writer. So we'll be communicating TCP IP and then rest out the back end, running on an Amazon EC2 cloud. The other data snap server will be running locally. We'll be talking to a Delphi client. We could also talk to a C builder client with REST. We'll also be looking at a RAD PHP client. And again, remember the proxy generators can generate Delphi. C++ Builder, JavaScript, PHP, and other languages that you define. So let's get into how we're going to create this application. Let's get into this data snap example. The first thing we want to do is write out to the Azure backend. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring up the Azure Server Writer project. 
Now as you can see, I've already got this project defined. To do this project, it was really simple. I would come in and say File New, Other, and inside of my DataSnap server, I would basically create a regular DataSnap server using TCP IP. Once I went through the wizard, it would generate a standard interface like you see before you, and I would have my server methods right here. Now notice that I'm in a container, and when I have that container, if I would come down to my components down below, I can see I have Windows Azure. When I don't have a visual component, I only have one component showing, which is the connection string. When you look at the connection string, it has your basically account key and your account name in there, and what you're connecting to. Let's go in and take a look at the code. As you can see, I'm basically setting up a queue service, and think of a message queue as an enterprise queue, an asynchronous queue that you can write messages to. So I set up my Azure service, I then come in and set up my account name, my account key, my endpoint, because this is a REST server interface, and then I basically come in and create my queue service, passing in my connection string. Once I'm done with that, I can just call setup, and then I can create an email list. Now remember, when you create a queue with Azure, it has to be all lowercase. The contents don't have to be lowercase, but the actual queue itself needs to be lowercase. And then I can put my message or the value that I'm going to be passing into this, and then I'll pass back a simple message saying that it was complete. This will basically take care of the server being connected to the Azure service and writing the information out to that service. So now that we have this defined, let's go ahead and run this application. I'm going to simply come up here, right mouse click on this, and click the Run Without Debug. This will go ahead and compile it really quickly, and it will kick it off, and as you can see, my server is running. Close Projects, and I'm going to call up the second project. This project is going to be my REST web server project. The way you create this project is pretty much the same way. You come in File New, Other, go into DataSnap Servers, and this time create a DataSnap REST application. When you do that, it will walk you through step by step of how to create an application. Once this has been generated for you, it actually writes all of your CSS, all of your images, all your JavaScript that may be used from a web server, and also the HTML for the known functions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the server methods. Inside of here I have an SQL connection. The reason why I have an SQL connection is because this server is going to connect to the other DataSnap server via TCP IP. Next, what I want to do is let's go in and take a look at the actual code. Now something pretty cool is going on because we've also added into XE the new regular expressions library that you can take advantage of. Let's go ahead and take a look at my validation for looking for emails. So as you can see, I have a validate write Azure method that I've exposed out. I have a pattern that I'm going to be using, and my email pattern is right here. I'm then going to go ahead and check the string that I'm passing in to make sure that it passes. If it does, it'll go ahead and return done. If not, it'll go ahead and say the input does not match the email pattern. And if it is correct, it'll then go ahead and make a connection to that DataSnap server that's already running, and then it will write the information out to the queue inside of that structure. When it's done, it'll go ahead and free, and I can return that status as a, an update. So it's fairly straightforward. Inside the design, if we go back to our main server, we're going to be connecting to port 8083, and we'll be using the REST protocols going back and forth. So let me kick off this application without run without debug, and we'll see how this runs. So as you can see, this kicks off, and when I start it, my web server started on port 8083. Now we can go ahead and minimize this, and let's go into the next project. The last project I want to look at from the Delphi perspective, and again, these can be written 100% in C++. Now I'm going to look at the Delphi client, and as you can see, it's pretty much straightforward. We basically have a REST connection right here, and if I click on it, you'll see that it's Keep Alive. 
it's going to talk to localhost, and it's going to be communicating over 8083. Now, just like in the first one, we also have an Azure connection string because I'm going to want to check my queue after I've written a couple of emails to it. So I have a connection string, but I also have a new component on here called the Azure Queue Management. Now, if I come back down to my controls, you'll notice that now that I have a GUI form that I can actually put on either blob management, queue management, or I can put on put in table management, which will allow me to control those three storage services available from Windows Azure. Or let's go out and take a look at the code. When I write to Azure, I'm going to set up some statuses, but I'm going to connect to my REST web server using the REST connection. I'm then going to validate that email address to see if it works correctly. If it does, it'll write complete, and if not, it'll come back with an email has poor form error message, and it'll close down the server. The second part of it really doesn't have any major writing of code because the actual Azure queue management interface has all of the features and functionality that you would expect and that you would need. It's already built into the component. The only thing that I'm going to set inside of my get Azure list is just setting the active management to true. So let's go ahead and kick this one off and we'll run this without run debug. So the first one I'm going to put in here is I'm going to put in mroslog at gmail.com and we'll go ahead and write to Azure. The write is complete m at and say write to Azure, you'll notice that the email has poor form, which is again using the regular expressions editor to make sure that I'm following the proper format. The next thing I want to do is actually check to make sure that my messages got put out on the queue. To do that, I can come in here and say get Azure list. When I click on the get Azure list button, I can open this up and notice there's my email list. If I double click on this, I can go in and I can see when it was actually put on the queue and what the message ID is. Let's say that I wanted to deploy this out to an Amazon EC2 infrastructure or to the cloud. We now have on the project, we have deployed a cloud. The next thing I want to show you is how to do this in, in RAD PHP XE. Just to review, if I come down to the bottom, you can see I still have my Azure server running. I still have my web server running. I still have my client completely running at this time. Now let's go in and look at the RAD PHP project. All I basically did was create a brand new RPCL application. After that, I then came in and said create a DataSnap REST client. To do that, all I did was come in here, type in HTTP, PHP, localhost, and 8083. That generated a client module right here. And what I could do is I could come out and I could save the client module as a global variable. When I come into my client classes unit, you'll notice that all of my proxies have been set up for doing this. So I can come out here and I can get my Azure, write Azure accounts. I can do all the things that you would expect to do. It's all been exposed. All I have to do then is come in and say file, use unit, and I pick the module, and then I come in and add the code. I set up a global, add in the client module that I was setting up, then call my server methods client, and then call the validate write Azure, and then I take the text from the edit one and put that into that structure. So let's go ahead and run this application. And if I come up here and we'll just put in junk at junk.com, and we'll go ahead and write the address. And what this will do is this will go ahead and come back. And now what I want to do is I want to go back into my client application and let's check to see if the queue has been written to. So if I open this up by getting the Azure list, there's my email list. What we've done is we've written an application in DataSnap that talks to Windows Azure, a web server DataSnap, a Delphi application, and a PHP application talking to that same DataSnap server simply and easily by using a couple of wizards. Mike, thanks for all the great demos showcasing Rad Studio's new multi-tier web and cloud computing technologies. No problem, David. With Rad Studio, you're ready to build tomorrow's applications today.